So our first unit is sequences and series. And 1.1 is our first topic called arithmetic sequences found on pages 6 to 21 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of arithmetic and geometric, including finite and infinite sequences and series. And our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to identify an arithmetic sequence. Number two, to understand the development and usage of a formula for finding the general term of an arithmetic sequence. And number three, to solve problems that involve arithmetic sequences. We'll start with some terminology. So a sequence is an ordered list of numbers, which we call terms, separated by commas. An arithmetic sequence is an ordered list of numbers where each term is found by adding the same number to the previous term. And when you're adding a number, that number could be a positive number or it could be a negative number. This number is called the common difference, and as I said, it can be positive or negative. So some examples. Determine whether or not the following sequences are arithmetic. If they are, find the first term, which we call T1, and common difference, and state the number of terms, which we call N. So in this case, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. Hopefully you can see that that one is going up by 3. So our first term, T1, is equal to 1. Our common difference in this case is equal to 3. And our number of terms in this particular sequence are 6. For our next one, 2 comma negative 4 comma negative 10 comma negative 16. Again, we have a first term that is 2. I guess that's not again, but we have a first term that is 2. And in each case, we're subtracting 6. So our common difference in this case will be negative. But in this case, we only have four terms. Now, this dot, dot, dot means that it will go on forever, but we only have four terms showing right now. 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. Well, between the first two terms, that goes up by 3, but then it goes up by 6, and then it goes up by 12. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. It is a sequence because there are commas in between each of the numbers, but it's not arithmetic. So we don't have to answer any of these uh, questions. And the next one, 10... Sorry, 12, comma, 10.5, comma, 9, comma, 7.5. So you have to remember that we live in a world of decimals and fractions. Not everything is going to be easy like with whole numbers. So it is possible to have some fractions in here or decimals. Our first term in this case is 12. And each of these terms are found by subtracting 1.5 or 1.5. So that would be negative 1.5. And in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms again. So as with all mathematical relationships, there's also a formula that describes this relationship and gives us a faster way to answer more complicated questions. So we've got it here. It's Tn equals T1 plus D times N minus 1. So Tn is the what we call the nth term. So that may be your 20th term or your 30th term or your 1 millionth term or whatever. T1 is your first term. D is your common difference. And N is your number of terms. So if we take a look at a basic arithmetic sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9... In this case, the fifth term would be 9. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our fifth term would be 9. And if we look at how we get that, well, we start with our first term, which is 1. And then we add onto it um, our number of terms, n minus 1, so four more terms. And each time, we are multiplying by our common difference, which is 2. And that's how we get 1 plus 8, which is equal to 9. So really, every time they have to multiply it by 2, we have to multiply it by 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 different times. Um, so that's 1 less than the number of total terms. And that's why this formula is written the way it is. So taking a look at this example, it says many factors affect the growth of a child. Medical and health officials are encouraged parents to keep track of their child's growth. The general guideline for the growth in height of a child between the ages of 3 and 10 years is an average increase of 5 centimeters per year. Suppose a child was 70 centimeters tall at age 3. So let's start by just writing out our sequence. Um, at age 3, that child is 70, age 4, 75, 80, 85, 90, etc. So there's our sequence. It says um, we need to write the general term that we could use to estimate what the child's height will be at any age between 3 and 10. So the general term is just writing in a formula with Tn. And we want an n left in our equation so we can plug in which term we're looking for. If we're looking for the fifth term or the tenth term or the ninetieth term, we can just plug in a value for n and we'll figure out what that term actually is, what that number will be. So we need to know what the first term is. Well, our first term is 70. And we need to know what the common difference is. Well, we know that. The common difference is 5. That's how much it's going up by each time. And then we still have n minus 1. 
So we'll just simplify this thing. We get 70 plus 5n minus 5, which leaves us with 65 plus 5n, and that is our general term, a general equation. So the question is, how tall is a child expected to be at age 10? Well, we need to know which term that's going to be. So if we label these, we got uh, our first term is when they're in age 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're actually looking for the, not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. We're looking for the eighth term. So we're, we would write that as saying T8. That's the eighth term we're looking for is going to be equal to 65 plus 5n. And n is actually 8, so we can plug that right in there. So we get T8, our eighth term is going to be 65 plus 40, which gives us 105 centimeters. So a child that's 10 years old should have a height of 105 centimeters. Here's our second example. It says carpenter ants are large, usually black ants, that make their colonies in wood. Although often considered to be pests around the home, carpenter ants play a significant role in a forested ecosystem. Carpenter ants begin with a parent colony. When this colony is well established, they form satellite colonies consisting of only the workers. An established colony may have as many as 3,000 ants. Suppose that the growth of the colony produces an arithmetic sequence in which the number of ants increases by approximately 80 ants each month. Beginning with 40 ants, how many months would it take for the ant population to reach 3,000? So what we've got here is that we're starting with 40 ants, and then the next month there would be 80 more than that, so that would be 120. After that, there'd be 200. After that, 280, etc., all the way to 3,000. So we want to find out how many terms there are because we want to find out how many months it takes for it to reach 3,000. Now, the hard way would be to just to keep on adding 80, 80, 80 and writing it all down and then counting the number of terms. So we're going to use our equation instead. So we've got Tn equals T1 plus D times N minus 1. So we'll start filling in some of the numbers that we do know. Our nth term, you can think of that as being just your last term. So that's 3,000. We want to find out which number in this sequence 3,000 actually is. Is it the 20th term? Is it the 90th term? Whatever. Our first term is 40, and we know our common difference is 80, because that's how much it goes up by each time. So now we just need to solve this equation. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract both, um, 40 from both sides, and I end up with 2,960, and that equals 80 times n minus 1. Now at this point, you could multiply the 80 in, but I'm going to divide both sides by 80. And when I do that, I get 37, and that equals n minus 1, and that means n equals 38. That means it takes 38 months. If you start at four, with 40 ants and you increase at 80 ants each month, it would take 38 months for that colony to reach 3,000. And here's our last example. It says, Jonathan has been given a job of stacking cans in a similar design to that of cereal boxes. And that was for an example in the textbook. It says, the numbers of cans in the rows produce an arithmetic sequence. Top three rows are shown, I didn't show you that. So it says there are 14 cans in the eighth row from the bottom and 10 cans in the 12th row from the bottom. Determine T1, D, and Tn for the arithmetic sequence. So what we can do here is we can write two different equations based on the information we were given. We're gonna use our Tn formula to do that. So our Tn formula says it's T1 plus D times N minus one. So in the first case, we know there are 14 cans, so that would be our nth, term, so 14 cans. We don't know our first term. We don't know our difference, but we do know that's in the eighth row from the bottom. And in the other case, we know that there are 10 cans in the 12th row from the bottom. So we actually can make two equations. So we get 14 equals T1 plus 7D, and we get 10 equals T1 plus 11D. Now, with two equations and two variables, we learned in, um, I think it was Foundations of Precalculus 10, that we can use substitution or elimination in order to do this. So what I'm going to use is elimination, and elimination is when we have the same terms but different signs. So the same um, coefficient in front but different signs. So I'm going to multiply the second equation over here. I'm going to multiply that one by negative 1. So it becomes negative 10 equals negative t one 
and negative 11d. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add these two equations together. The t1 minus t1 gives you zero t1s. Over here, we get negative, or sorry, you get positive 4. And over here, we get negative 4d. So that means that d is negative 1. So now we've found out what d is equal to. We need to find out what t1 and tn are. Well, t1, we could use either of these two equations that we have right here that we found out to find out um, what uh, t1 is by substituting negative 1 in for d. So if I use this first equation, I've got 14 equals t1 plus 7 times negative 1, which makes t1 equal to, that's negative 7 and 14, it means t1 is equal to 21. And then we need to find tn, which just means a general term. Um, so tn, we need to know what t1 is, our first term, that's 21. And we need to know what d is, and that's negative 1 n minus 1. So tn equals 21 minus n plus 1. So tn is equal to 22 minus n. So in summary, an arithmetic sequence is a list of numbers separated by commas in which each term in the sequence is found by adding the same number, it could be a positive or a negative number, to the previous term. The general formula for every arithmetic sequence is tn equals t1 plus d times n minus 1, where tn is your last term in the sequence, or the term that you're looking for, t1 is the first term in the sequence, d is your common difference, and n is the number of terms. This formula can be used to answer questions regarding large sequences and many real-world situations, and that way you don't have to actually write out the entire sequence. It would be time-consuming and useless. Quite often writing out the first few terms of the sequence will help you determine what numbers to plug into your formula, though, and that can be of help. So your assignment is on pages 16 to 21. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.